All right, so this is the Tehachapi Pass, uh, or rather this is the Tehachapi Loop, which is a part of the Greater Tehachapi Pass. Um, it is a section of railroad that was originally built to connect San Francisco and Los Angeles. And it's a really cool feat of engineering because basically, um, like over the course of, I think it's 28 miles, maybe 30 miles, this it averages like a 2.2% grade. So trains use steel wheels on steel rails and that makes them really efficient. They're like an awesome way. <laughs> They're an awesome way to transport goods and people because it's super efficient. But it means that it's very difficult. It's very difficult for these trains to move up and down hills. Uh, and so, okay, hold on, let's wait. Too long, one short, another long is a grade crossing. That's that's how you know your train horns. But uh, yeah, so so trains have a really tough time going up and down hills. And over the course of this Tehachapi Pass, they're cutting into granite, they're going through mountains. I mean, you can sort of see this terrain is not super friendly to trains that really benefit from being in, uh, you know, like a flat area. So as this thing cuts through, uh, cuts through Tehachapi, they had to make this loop in order to maintain a reasonable grade for the train. I'm, I'm like fairly sure that's the reasoning behind it, um, but maintaining this, like, like putting this loop in means that you can have a more gentle, constant grade for the train as opposed to dropping it off, you know, what looks like maybe 200 feet, 300 feet? I'm totally guessing here. You can look it up. It's called the Tehachapi Loop. Um, there's a big train going through it now. It's double tracks, so possible that another train could come through the other way um, and uh, yeah I don't know I just thought I would uh, I would show this there's not really a big point to it uh, I read about this a long time ago as a high schooler who was really into model trains and uh, so it's kind of like a famous piece of, of engineering and I thought that while I was in town for some rocket stuff and some work stuff um, I would visit this this little place that I read about so much um, and then I got my nice camera out and figured we would uh, film some of it. I'm hoping that there's going to be a distributed power locomotive that comes in the middle here. But you can see the, the head end of the train is coming around. Uh, and hopefully we'll see another engine in the foreground. Although I can't say that I'm convinced at this point that there will be. But that, gave, that would give me an opportunity to talk about distributed power, which is really cool. They basically like wirelessly control these locomotives that are in the middle of the train. And it helps because the whole train load has to pass through the entirety of the front coupler. And so if you have a distributed power unit, if you have one of these units in the middle of the train, you can relieve a lot of the load in that front coupler. But I'm not seeing one of those today, so uh, I guess we're just not gonna have that. But anyway, yeah, it's a big loop. It's just a big loop of track because trains can't do hills so good. And uh, it kind of reminds you of like a model railroad, right? Because you've got these like tight spaces you're trying to build in, so you got to loop the track around a couple of times to make it feel like, you know, you can build longer trains. It doesn't sound very nice. But uh, I suppose usually steel on steel doesn't sound very nice. There's a lot of interesting stuff in this train. I can tell you a little bit about that at least. So here we've got, uh, these cars usually carry wood, I believe, um, any type of lumber. These are tank cars. This is the stuff that's spilled in Ohio. <laughs> that's not the chemical, but you know, that's the kind of thing that spills. These are uh, hoppers, so think grain, stuff like that. These are gondolas in the back here, um, scrap metal. You can do uh, all sorts of things in gondolas, really. There's box cars back here. Um, in between these lumber cars, these box cars are used for paper goods. They're used for, um, honestly, a lot of things. Like, there's a really good chance if you look around your house, look around your apartment, wherever you live, um, like, a, I don't know, I would say like 40%, maybe more of the stuff that you have in that space is, uh, you know, spend some time on a train at one point. Man, this thing is just wailing around the corner. <laughs> I wonder if we can see the EOT. So trains also have what's called an EOT, which is an end of train device. In older trains, you see like a caboose, right? That's sort of like a traditional thing. But newer trains, oh, look at that. You can see the, um, the wood cars, the, uh, 
lumber car is going around in the background there too because it's looping around to go down further. But anyway, yeah, uh, an EOT is called an end of train device or EOTD and uh, it's a little wireless transmitter. It looks at the air pressure in the lines. That's how uh, train cars brake. Basically you maintain pressure and if the train car separates you lose pressure and so the brakes are normally closed and stops the car. It's like a great safety thing. Um, but yeah, sometimes you can see the EOT when it's darker, it'll blink, um, and then it gives a little wireless transmission to the front of the train so that they know what's going on in the back. I wonder what this train is doing. There's like a lot of mixed stuff. Trains that are mixed like this, I feel like are a little less common now because it's more efficient um, if you can just load up trains to be really, uh, super like single material dense um, and these mixed things require a lot of switching time which is I think less convenient for the railroad. Anyway, I don't know if this is interesting content but I thought I would get a nice camera and just like show a train going around a loop. <laughs> And then, uh, all right, we'll get one more shot over here. It's so scenic out here. I mean, it's really beautiful. It's like this picturesque valley that's out of some kind of video game. And it's, you know, the soundtrack is not quite out of a, out of a video game, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This is the Tehachapi Loop and maybe you learned something or maybe you uh, didn't and uh, what a bummer if you didn't learn something. But anyway, I am Joey B. You're not watching a rocket video, so I'm not going to say the BPS sign off. But thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day. Bye.